Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a game changer. We are going to be talking about how you can improve your parenting, which in return will benefit your children in some way. I think that there are far too many parents in the world that think that their parenting is perfect and does not need to be improved but you can be the best parent in the world and I guarantee that there's still room for improvement. As parents, we should be continuously evaluating our parenting and brainstorming ways we can improve. Often parents will make comments about how challenging their kids are. I know I have, I'm guilty. We have no issues coming up with ways that they need to be more disciplined and behave better. But how often do we evaluate ourselves? The truth is, a child is only as good as their surroundings, their environment, and their peers. As parents, we are their biggest influencers, so we need to make sure that we're putting in the hard work. These 10 tips are designed to help you reflect as a parent and possibly take a new perspective on your children. Let's get into them now. So first off, we want to embrace the joys and the challenges of our children. We need to enjoy watching them learn and grow. There are many highs and many lows when it comes to parenting. I found myself absorbed by the lows and I always anticipated the next tantrum of my toddler. I thrive as a parent in the happy moments, but during tantrums and big emotions, I feel overwhelmed, stressed, sad, frustrated, all of the big feels. But now I'm trying to take this new perspective of also enjoying the lows and I know that these battles are only temporary. One day I'm probably gonna miss my toddler following me around the house and clinging to my leg and wanting to sleep in my bed. Number two, we need to teach empathy and kindness by modeling it and we need to talk about our feelings and emotions. We as adults need to work on regulating our own emotions so our children can learn off of that. We need to learn how to talk calm and collect. If you're feeling really overwhelmed and like you're gonna have a breakdown, you need to remove yourself from the situation. I find with myself that if I'm feeling really stressed, what works for me is I like to leave the room and I sit on the floor for a few minutes and I just take a few deep breaths and that allows me to have a little refresh and I can collect my thoughts so that when I approach my daughter again, I am more calm and more patient with her. How can we expect our children not to yell, um, not to argue, and to have patience if we as adults aren't doing the same? Sharing feelings and our emotions is something that a lot of adults struggle with, so if we want our children to be different than us, we need to really work on that. Number three, we want to model good manners and how to respect others. We need to relearn our manners, people. Have you seen social media lately and all of the crazies out there in the world? We really need to reflect. Are we one of those people? Are we treating strangers with kindness? We need to say please and thank you, a very simple thing, but are we saying please and thank you to our children and to our spouse and to strangers? How are we treating people driving on the roads? I see every single day when I drive on the roads, people flipping each other the finger and stuff and children are in the back seat. It's just not age appropriate to be showing your kids such rage. If we model how to have good manners and be respectful in front of our children, then our children are gonna pick up on that, they're gonna absorb that goodness, and they're gonna implement that in their lives. Mommy. Number four, we need to take care of ourselves by practicing self-care and by getting help when we need it. When you have your needs met as a parent, you're gonna be better able to handle difficult days with your children. This will also show your kids that it's okay not to be okay at times, and it's okay to ask for help. Another thing to discuss when we're talking about self-care is nutrition. Um, what we're putting in our bodies. How can we expect... You want nanas? You want nanas? Okay, I'll give you nanas soon. Soon. Who wants nanas? Say me. 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 Soon. Okay, go find something in the pantry. Go look in the pantry for some nana. Good job. How are we expecting our children to eat healthy foods if we as adults are not eating the right foods? If we're gonna be constantly eating junk food, our children are gonna wanna eat junk food. They're little coffee cats of us. You want me to get you a snack? Okay, mommy, get you a snack. Be right back.
Number five, active listening. Give your kids your full undivided attention when they are speaking. Encourage them to express themselves and create a safe space for doing so. Do this early on, early, early on, so that when they're teenagers and they start getting into trouble, they feel like they have a safe space to talk to you and they feel like they can trust you. If your child feels like they're being heard, they're gonna have a decrease, decreased tantrums or the tantrum is gonna resolve faster. Number six, self-reflection. Be open-minded to self-improvement. Everyone needs to improve. Reflect on your attitudes, your actions, and your behaviors, and think about how that can affect your child's development. Another really good point when we're talking about self-reflection, if we as adults practice self-reflection once a day, we can teach our children to self-reflect once a day. When you put your child through bed, you can ask them, hey, Alethea, how did today go? Did we have a good day? Did we have a bad day? What are things that we did really good at today and what are things we can improve on? That is really healthy for a child to practice early on because guess what? When they get to school, their teachers are gonna ask them to reflect all the time. Education, in education, you are constantly forced to self-reflect. You have to order to thrive and do better as a student. I love you. Number seven, quality time. Prioritize time with your children. Engage in activities that foster connection and have mutual enjoyment. Create special memories and moments through shared experiences. You can play a game, you can read a book, or you can just have a really special conversation with them. We live in a world of too many distractions. Technology such as phones and the TV really disconnects a family if it's used too much. Less technology will allow space for meaningful moments. We live in a world of go, 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 go. Sometimes we just need to slow down, have slow days, and really just take it all in with our children. And also remember that you cannot buy your children's happiness. So buying them a ton of toys because you're not actually spending quality time with them is not the way to go. If you feel guilty because you're not giving your child enough quality time, that is not ever, ever, ever going to be replaced by a new toy, okay? Number eight, recognize that parenting is a continuous learning opportunity. Stay informed and up to date about child development and parenting techniques. New research ensures that you are equipped with the knowledge and skills to support your child's growth. And keep in mind that old methods, old ways are not always the best way anymore. So when we go to our parents and our grandchildren and they offer us a tip or trick, just take it with a grain of salt, <laughs> do your own research because things that they did in the past don't always work today. We like spanking your kids, hitting your kids. That does not work today. Um, another thing that was really hilarious that I got told by a 70 year old was when my baby was fussing my newborn, they said to give them whiskey. And in today's society, that is just a no go. We don't give our newborns whiskey. But back in the day, I guess that is something that worked for them. <laughs> Number nine, patience is even difficult for adults, but children need time to learn and grow. It's important to be patient as they navigate their way through their own life. It is your child's first time being a kid. It's their first time being two, or it's their first time being five, it's their first time being a teenager. They have a lot of learning to do because they've never done it before. That goes the same for us as parents. It's our first time being a mom to a two-year-old. It's our first time being a mom to a five-year-old. It's our first time being a mom to a teenager. It's hard on us too, and we are learning too. So everyone needs to have a patience. The whole family needs to be patient with each other. Number 10, the final point, and probably the biggest point, the one that is most dear to my heart and that I try to focus on every, every single day, and that is to have gratitude. Encourage your kid to cultivate a sense of gratitude and appreciation for their life. 
There are so many things, big and small, to be thankful for. Even if you are a family that is financially struggling, even if you are a family that has a member who is sick or a child who is sick, there is still so many things to be thankful for. And a lot of the time people get caught up in all of the negativity in their life and having a negative mindset can be really, really dangerous. It can be really, really hard not to compare yourself to other people's lives. You may look at other moms and think, oh my God, they're being a better mother than me. Or you may look at another family and think that their family runs so much more smoothly. Or you may look at other people's children and go, oh my gosh, those children are so behaved. Why aren't mine? And it can be a slippery slope to look into people's lives. You need to focus on your life, what's good in your life, what you are doing right. And if there are things you need to work on, which I'm sure there are, you focus on that and you work on that. And as long as you are improving every single day, you are on the right track. So do not envy others. Instead, focus on what you do have in your own life. A positive mindset can work wonders. If you as a parent have gratitude for all of the little things, such as the clothes you have, you have an appreciation for your clothes, or you as a parent show appreciation for the food in your cupboard. If you can find appreciation in the small things, your child is gonna pick up on that appreciation, and one day they might look at you and go, oh mom, I'm so thankful for my supper tonight. And that is a beautiful moment right there. So those were my 10 tips that me as a parent I'm really trying to implement in my life. By no means do you guys think for one second that I have mastered this list because let me tell you, I am not a master in any of these things. These are simply things that I have learned, heard from others, did research on, or brainstormed in my self-reflection. These are things that I think are really, really valuable and really will work magic into your household. And I am still practicing them too. So if you liked this video and you thought these were great points, give my video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. And please subscribe to me, hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment if you guys agree with my points or if you don't agree with my points, start up a conversation. I look forward to hearing from you guys. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you in my next video. Bye.